Hello, it's me Lode. Welcome to another weekly video on my YouTube channel. I hope you are enjoying my content and if you do, please consider subscribing and sharing. It would make me so happy to grow a community here on YouTube too. In this video, I'm going to show you how I take pictures of my paintings, what backgrounds, light and what device you can use to have a beautiful picture of your products that you can use to post on Instagram or even use on Etsy as a listing picture. I'll also show you how to edit those pictures so they look bright and attractive to the eye. Believe it or not, I've been using my iPhone all this time to take my product pictures and it's not even the best iPhone out there. So you don't need to spend so much money on a professional camera or any other expensive device or lighting. You can take pictures professionally with what you already have. And in this video I'm going to show you how I do it. And I'm going to share with you all my tricks that I've been doing for years. If you scroll down my Instagram feed, you'll see that almost all my pictures have similar style. Lightning and most of them have contrasted backgrounds that make my drawings pop up from the picture. So as obvious as it sounds, my first tip for you would be to use a contrasted background for your paintings. So if you are painting on a white paper, then your background for the perfect picture would be a darker different color. I like to use wood for my backgrounds. I think wood, color and white match perfectly and it goes very nicely with my style. But you could use a different material and color for your background. Any other color that you like would work and any other surface too. There are many colorful ca cardboards in stationery shops that you can use for this. And you can even get a few different ones and mix them or use each one for a different painting. When I started working on my Etsy shop and I was posting regularly on Instagram, I used to have a white desk. So when I needed to take my product pictures, that didn't work for me because it was all very white and boring with no contrast and it was hard to get the correct white balance on my phone. So I went and bought a box of wooden flooring that I put together, making like an A2 size wood rectangle that I would take from under the sofa each time I was taking pictures of my products. I even painted the other side of the wood flooring grey, so I would have a different background for my pictures if I wanted to, but I ended up using the wood background way more because it matched my style more. Now I have a bamboo desk, so I already have the perfect wood background for my pictures and it's very handy. I stopped using my wood flooring setup, but I still save it in case I need it in the future. Who knows? If you like the wood flooring idea, go and have a look. There are many colors and designs out there and if you need only a rectangle for your background with just a box, it's enough and it's not very expensive. Or if you already have a nice wooden floor in your house, make use of that. Once you have your background sorted, it's time to find the best spot for your photo shoot. So my second tip is to be next to a window with indirect sunlight. We don't want the direct sun on our painting, but we do need as much natural light as possible. So find that spot on your house and set up your background there. As you can see, you don't need fancy studio lights, just a big window and natural light. Don't turn on any lights in your room as this will create shades. I think the perfect time to take pictures is around midday, when you get plenty of light coming into your room but does not come directly through the window and it's not in the evening when the light changes and the colors will change too. Also, if the day is grey and gloomy, you might want to wait for another sunny bright day to take your pictures. I know it can be frustrating, but trust me, it's worth the wait. My third tip would be to add some attrezzo or props around your paintings. I like to use my brushes, color pencils, my watercolor palette, any watercolor cups, plants or any other objects that will match your paintings like shells, flowers, sweets, packaging supplies, literally anything you can think of could work. Sometimes I like to take the picture with one hand and have the other one on the painting holding a brush or a pencil so you can add that personal touch and this way you can also show how big or how small your painting is. There is no perfect way of placing the objects or props. Try different spots and see what you like best and what feels good for you and your style. And don't overfill the background. Sometimes less is more. If you have a very intricate painting, then your background would look much nicer with less props that will distract you. So have that in mind when getting ready for your photoshoot. 
Then it's time to take the pictures. Make sure your phone camera is clean so you don't get blurry pictures. You need to position yourself on top of your setup so if you need it, you can stand on a chair to help you have the top down view. Once you open the camera on your iPhone, you'll see a double cross in the middle that is showing you if you're holding the phone leveled. Make sure you have the grid on so it helps you frame your painting. Now it's time to play with the composition. You can place the painting in the middle and have a very perfect picture or you can play a bit with the angle that you're holding your phone. What I like to do when taking pictures of a painting is take different ones in case I need them later. So make sure you always take one with where the paper is completely straight and center with the top down view. And then you can take angled pictures of details and get closer to your painting to have different perspective in your photos. Once you have your photos, you can select the ones you like the most by tapping the little heart at the bottom and start editing them. I use the edit option that comes in the Photos app on the iPhone because it's very handy, easy to use and everybody has access to it. Just click on edit and you'll see all the options there. So we're going to edit this, this picture just pressing the edit button at the top. We have here two options. Um, we have the filters but we're not going to use that one because that's more for photos and we're editing a picture. So we'll just press the adjust one and here we have the auto button that it will automatically make some changes for you and then you can change lightly what you want. But we are going to do it manually today so what I usually like to do is I'm going to uh, make the exposure like 20 points higher just to add some brightness. Also I'm going to do the same with the brilliance option. Usually as you can see you can play with it and this one will adjust only the brightest spots on your picture. Then with the highlights you can also add that like 10 points higher and then for the shadows what I usually do is if I have very dark areas I'm going to like put maybe 10-15 points up so the dark areas are not very dark. Then we're going to adjust the contrast. We're just going to make maybe 5 or 10 points higher so we have a bit more of that crispy colors and then what I usually do is if my picture is still a bit dark I will add a bit of brightness maybe 5 or 10 points up and then we have the black point. This will change the blacks on your picture as you can see here. So maybe I usually don't, don't touch this one that much. So maybe for this one I'll just leave it as it is. Then for the saturation I'm going to go up 5 points. Um, vibrancy again this one will make your colors pop out more. So maybe let's go 10 points higher. And then you have warmth and tint. These are the last ones that I usually edit. Um, if your picture, if you're not happy with your white balance on your picture, you can go cooler or warmer here. Um, and in this case, I'm going to go a bit warmer, like five points maybe. And then the tint option will add either greens or magentas to your picture. So again, if you're not, if you're still not happy with your white balance on your picture, then you can add a little bit more magenta, for example, in this case. I wouldn't go higher than 10 points, either up or down. And then you have uh, like a few more options here, but I usually don't touch for um, editing my pictures. Once you are happy with the result, just press done at the bottom right to save your changes. And now you have your photo ready to post on social media or on Etsy to promote your products and paintings. There are other apps out there that you can use to edit your pictures. Some would be so much more professional and detailed, but I've been using the photos edit option for so long now that I can edit my pictures so quickly and I already know what I like and how it works best for me. So feel free to try them and see what you prefer to edit your pictures. Some of these apps are called Snapseed, Visco or Lightroom. So if you're curious, give them a try and let me know your thoughts in the comments below.
Also, if you know any other app that you love to use to edit your photos, I would like to try it too, so let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video where I share all my secrets for taking good product pictures with no extra equipment apart from your iPhone and how I edit on my phone. So see you next week with another video. Thank you for watching. Bye!